Hey guys, welcome back to Masonic Curators, where we are preserving history through storytelling. Uh, we've got an interesting item this week. It is a replica item, and I was given something by Worshipful Brother Brian Mara, uh, and it is this. This, if you can tell, I'll try to get it a little closer. I hope it's in focus. If not, we'll do a cutaway shot. Um, it is a Civil War Masonic patch. This is really interesting. It comes from Brother Brian because he was a Civil War, still is, I believe, a Civil War reenactor, and he enjoys his history. And he sent this to me, and I found it absolutely incredible. Um, the workmanship on it is really nice, and it's got this kind of felt patch feel. And what's interesting about this is it got me thinking about Civil War era masonry. Uh, if any of you have ever read A House Undivided, um, which is a great book out there uh, and focuses on many of the anecdotal stories of the Civil War uh, and Freemasonry, it's a fantastic read. You guys should really check it out. But in addition to that, a great companion book for that uh, is a book that's based on facts. So it takes some of those anecdotal stories, maybe it destroys them, but it backs up even more incredible stories of things that you never would have thought possible, and these are based on facts. And that book is uh, The Better Angels of Our Nature by uh, Worshipful Brother Michael Halloran. Uh, so I would pick up both of those books if you haven't had a chance. In fact, the guy who wrote A House Undivided has a couple other books that you might find interesting as well. Um, historically, these patches were worn on our Civil War uh, veterans. They would have them somewhere, you know, sewn on to their jackets. Um, in some cases, you hear the stories of guys who were in POW camps and they took chicken bones and they whittled them into little pieces and then they turned them into square and compasses and they wore them as pins on their jackets and coats and would even give them among other prisoners or even to their captors. Um, it wasn't unheard of for these guys to hold lodge in POW camps at the uh, they were able to do this even though the enemies who were keeping them captive knew that they were having lodge meetings. In some cases, those captives were holding lodge meetings in these tents on POW camps while their Tyler was their people keeping them there, uh, the enemies. Um, something about wartime, but masonry supersedes all of it. It's really a, a bizarre thing. Um, but again, it's a really cool item. And I want to thank Brother Brian for sparking my interest in Civil War masonry. And uh, really, it's one of the things that kind of started me digging into the history um, as far as like colonialism and our in Freemasonry's kind of injection into what we consider our mainstream history. Not, you know, medieval times, not whatever, but in the formation of the country and, and whatnot and its kind of social impact. So, again, really cool. Uh, thank you so much, Brian Morrow, for this, and that's it. So we'll talk to you guys all tomorrow, probably, and uh, thanks for watching, as always.